Hello. So this is a quick recording in response to a question from one of my patrons um, with Lyra in the background doing the jigsaw. Say hello, Lyra. And Mork in the background. Anyway, anyway, so live from the home of the Knights and the Pesman House family. So the question is um, about a nursery school aged child who is struggling to attend. So I've done lots and lots of work about sort of school based anxiety and emotionally based school avoidance in children from kind of primary school age and onwards. Um, but this is about a child who's struggling to attend nursery school and having meltdowns or tantrums or similar big episodes in the morning and um, both at nursery and at home they're wondering what to do next because they don't seem to be making progress. So I'm going to put this as a shout out on my socials and I would love to hear what you're doing if this is something that is an area of expertise or experience for you. Um, but my immediate thoughts on this one are first of all as with any age if we're going to try and overcome the problem to address the issue we need to work out what the problem is, what the issue is. Why does this child find that they can't go to nursery right now? What's going on for them? What can happen if we don't do this, if we don't explore that, is that we start trying to fix the wrong problem. And that's really, really unsustainable. So we need to work out What's the actual problem here? And with younger children, then good ways of doing that can be through play. Um, that can be through use of stories and exploring through characters. And it might just take a little bit longer. You can also do things like in your play um, or using sort of images and visuals of kind of walking through the day, thinking about different people and places and just seeing how they feel um, in response to those different things and trying to see if there's anything there that makes them feel angry or anxious or sad, for example. They might not have all the words for that, but by beginning to explore it through play, we can begin to see the bits that feel easy and good and calm and happy and all those nice things and the bits that maybe feel a little bit more tricky. And we might begin to identify if there are faces or spaces or elements of the day or the situation that feel trickier. The other thing um, that we can think about when um, helping, again, children of any age, but thinking about this particularly with the nursery school age children now, so our early years, um, is thinking about what that drop off looks like, because we might have a bit of kind of separation anxiety going on here. That's very, very common in younger children um, and particularly our uh, kind of kids who are coming up through who might have had really intense at home time during COVID. Um, and so thinking about what that drop off moment looks like. Ideally, we want to have home and nursery working together to agree what these kind of routines and rituals look like in the morning. And, you know, we should try and make it a little bit fun for the child, but fun, but in a repetitive, boring kind of way, because it needs to feel as similar as it can every day. So the child learns, this is what happens. It's safe. I know what to expect and it's going to be okay. That's the message we're trying to get across here. And we might do this through things like um, creating a special way of saying goodbye. So perhaps there might be a special handshake or a way of uh, having a hug or a kiss or a little song that we sing. Whatever works between the child um, and the adult who is uh, saying goodbye to them, it's, it's about making it work for them, creating their own little ritual there, um, and then thinking about, and who are they being passed on to? Um, so who is going to meet and greet and make this child feel excited um, and ready to engage with the day ahead and make that fun for them? Is there an activity that they might be able to engage with right away that's going to get them really, really keen and motivated to enter the building? Perhaps Perhaps there's another child they particularly want to play with or a responsibility that they like to have. It will really depend on the individual child, but it's about thinking about both how to make that goodbye feel OK and feel safe and feel the same each day. So we get used to it, but then also about making it exciting, fun, calming, safe, whatever that child needs in order to go in and enter. The other bit of the equation here that's really important is that you must remember if you're working in the nursery, if a child has a difficult goodbye and perhaps there is distress, tears, upset, anger, any sort of big tricky feeling for a parent or carer to watch, assume as the person working with that child that we are going to think that child has stayed in that state all day unless you tell us otherwise. So one of the things that can help is if you could just let us know actually your child did calm and it was okay. Because that helps us as the adult at home to know, oh, okay, 
good, actually they're all right. That reduces our anxiety. That gives us permission and the ability to go on and get about the rest of our day to perhaps even exercise a little self-care and means that we're more able to support that child moving forward. We're, we're less anxious, our emotional resilience is higher and, and so on and so forth. So that communication between home and nursery actually really makes a big difference here all round. So yeah, that's this is where I would start essentially try and understand what the issue is why is there this this reluctance why can't the child um, uh, attend as perhaps their peers are managing what's the blockage here so then we can begin to think about is there anything we can do to address change manage that for for this child and then be thinking okay are there ways that we can make that actual moment of drop-off which can be challenging for both child and parent or carer uh, more predictable more fun, more motivating for the child and make sure that they feel safe and ready to enter, making it the same each day so they know just what to expect, which means it gets easier and easier and easier. I look forward to hearing your ideas too. Um, I'll pop over onto the socials now and uh, put a call out because you always have so many brilliant suggestions. I really look forward to hearing them. Okay, until next time. Bye-bye.